Hey guys, this is your last topic summary for AK Chemistry using resources. Now this is a new topic, so I reckon this is going to come up in the exam. If you want to make sure you know everything, you can pop over to my website, get my free origin guide, loads and loads of knowledge, checklists, quick fire questions, things for you to learn in there, or you can get that off Amazon. The Earth provides us with many things, including warmth from the sun, shelter from the trees, food from plants and animals, transport along rivers, and we can get all of these from the rivers, the seas, the atmosphere and the land. We would not survive very long without water. But only a small percent of the water on Earth is suitable for us to drink. So we need to remove salt from it, which is desalination. And we need to make it safe to drink or portable water. To make water safe to drink, we need to remove any um, dirt, mud in there, so any large solids. We need to remove the bacteria. And we need to remove any nasty or unwanted bits of um, too many mineral ions like the salt that would be in seawater. We add in various different things to water. We add in chlorine to kill things and we add in fluoride for tooth protection and bone protection. There are lots of very important metals on earth and some of them are very very rare. So we need to develop new ways to get rare, rare metals out through low yield ores. Low yield is where using traditional mining methods wouldn't be financially viable. Two of these methods are bioleaching and phytomining. Bioleaching is when we have a large body of water, say a lake, which has metal in it, such as copper dissolved in it. If we want to get the copper out of the lake, out of the water, we can add in bacteria. These will take up the um, copper from the water and then they will leach out copper ions. It's basically the bacteria's way. Another method is if we have lots of copper again in the soil but at very, very low yield. So not enough for us to dig up the soil and get the copper out, say, by reduction or electrolysis. We can put plants in. This is generally, believe it or not, broccoli. The plants will then absorb the copper ions from the soil. We can then cut them down and burn them. And then from the ash we can do electrolysis. The disadvantage of using phytomining is that plants grow very slowly. When you're doing a life cycle assessment of an object, you need to look at the different stages of its life. The manufacture, the use and the disposal. And the environmental impacts of each of these sections. So the environmental impacts of the energy. So the energy needed for production of this. Bearing in mind that this generally comes from... Um, Fossil fuels which are being burnt, so electricity based on fossil fuels, leading to carbon dioxide being put into the atmosphere. The materials used, whether they can be used from um, natural resources or whether something else can be used. Whether the natural resources have to be further processed. The production of the product. using the product and disposal of the product. Using the product, does it need electricity to use it? Does anything come out of it when it's being used? 
production of the product, we're talking about things like atom economy, how much of the um, reactants are actually going to end up in the product, how much waste is there, how much waste of the natural resources that went into it um, when you're making the product. And disposal of the product, can be it be recycled, can um, it be incinerated for another use or is it just going to have to go to landfill? For rusting to take place, we need to have iron, oxygen and water and that is going to result in iron oxide. You can see in my experiment here that the iron oxide is this brown, orangey, red stuff that is on the sides. Rusting will actually lead to an increase in mass because you're taking the iron and you're adding in the oxygen. There are a couple of ways we can stop this from happening. We can um, galvanise things. We can coat things. We can use a sacrificial metal. In a pure metal, we have layers. These layers can slide, and because these layers can slide, a pure metal is very soft. An alloy has disrupted layers. Which cannot slide. And because they cannot slide, it is very hard. The majority of glass we use is made up from silicon dioxide. Ceramics such as clay ceramics are a mixture of silicon dioxide and aluminium oxide. Thermosetting and thermosoftening polymers have very, very different properties, and this is based on their structures. Both have long polymer chains in, but thermosetting have crosslinks, whereas thermosoftening don't have crosslinks. This means upon heating, the thermosoftening polymers can just slide past each other, whereas the thermosetting polymers cannot slide past each other. Which means thermosetting polymers are going to burn and thermosoftening polymers are going to melt. The harbour process produces ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen gas. Our main source of nitrogen and hydrogen gas is getting them from the air. We can also get hydrogen gas from the electrolysis of water. They are fed into the reaction vessel where they'll be turned into ammonia which is a liquid so that can be taken off at the bottom and any unreacted gases can go back round into the reaction. It is done at 450 degrees C at 200 atmospheres and using an iron catalyst. The production of ammonia is very important because it is an important source of nitrogen for fertilisers. The conditions used in the harbour process are actually a compromise. The forward reaction is exothermic. So this tells us, using Le Chatelier's principle of dynamic equilibrium, that we should be using a low temperature if we want to drive the forward reaction. But at a low temperature, we have a low rate of reaction. So even though using the high temperature of 450 degrees drives the backwards reaction away from ammonia towards the production of the gas, the rate of reaction is so fast that it is constantly cycling between the two. So 450 degrees is a compromised temperature. The ammonia comes off as a liquid, so that can be taken off, that can be removed, which is also going to drive the forward reaction. There are less moles of product than there are moles of reactant. There are four over this side and two over this side. So high pressures of 200 atmospheres are going to drive the forward reaction because this is going to take up less space. There are less moles of it. A higher pressure would increase the rate of the forward reaction even more, but it would be dangerous because high pressure leads to risk of explosion. So 200 atmospheres is used because it is a relatively safe pressure to do it with. As we increase the pressure, the danger to the workers increases. The um, thickness of the walls increases. All sorts of stuff like insurance costs are going to increase. 